after, uh, <laughs> after looking at the film from yesterday, anything kind of stand out in particular? That you Same thing I said. I mean, nothing has changed. You know, I didn't, I didn't think we had the right approach. Uh, that's why I took a timeout less than two minutes into the game. Uh, you know, self-inflicted most of the turnovers. You know, they weren't forced turnovers. Uh, we went back and looked at every single one of them today, and uh, I just didn't think we had the right. Uh, Energy is not the word, but I didn't think that our focus was there to start the game. You know, that being said, I still think if we eliminate the turnovers, we would have had an opportunity to win the game. And you said in the fourth quarter, too, you got a little stagnant. Do you think, you know, just the way they play defense kind of? No, I don't think so. I mean, everybody talks about the switch in defense, but, you know, they they played that way in the other games, and we've scored plenty of points to win. You know, you just got to, you know, but if, you, if, if the point differential is 25 in, in turnovers, you know, uh, you're probably going to have a very difficult time winning the game. You know, you go back and look, they didn't, it wasn't like they shot lights out or anything. Obviously, Harden made seven threes or whatever, but it weren't, it, they didn't shoot lights out. I mean, they shot 51 threes and made 15 of them. You know, so the opportunities were there, but when we're turning over the ball the way we did, you just don't allow yourself an opportunity to, you know, <clears throat> you have 23 turnovers, there's 23 more opportunities that you give them. And when you think about uh, what happened in the first half, they had one turnover. You know, we had 14, I think. And so that's just too much of a discrepancy to, to beat a, a good basketball team. Do you think it's fairly natural just for someone who's 19 like Zion, like the deference at times? Oh, I, I think it's a process. You know, I do think it's a process. And I think, you know, with him, uh, expectations are so high that everybody forgets he's a 19-year-old kid. Uh, he's played five games, I guess, or whatever in the NBA now. Uh, so it's a learning process for him, too. And I don't, you know, I, I, I understand that. And I think, you know, as, as the media and as fans, I think you got to understand that, too, that he's 19-year-old. He's played five NBA games. Preseason, you know, I mean, preseason is the preseason, but I'm talking about actual NBA games. And I think uh, he's learning every game. And he's shown just on raw talent, you know, what can what he can be. So uh, we have to give him that chance to to learn and, and grow and move forward. Do you think? Do you think? It, I was just quick follow up. I was just yeah. gonna say, given that demeanor, I mean, you feel like he he wanted kind of a green light to be more ball dominant at times or, or call for the ball. Oh no, I mean, I think he is who he is, and he and that'll all come, you know. I mean, that'll all, that that will all come, you know. He's not going to go out there and say, throw the ball to me every time. You know, that's just not who he is. And he's going to always defend his teammates. And that's what makes him who he is right now. Alvin, at this stage, do you have to do specific things to keep him engaged? Or do you just kind of go with the natural flow of the offense? No, I, I mean, and, and, and we'll do that. And we, we've already got that in, you know, in, 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 in our game plan right now. But, you know, you got to also be careful as a coach, too to not try to spoon feed somebody into being uh, something that they will eventually be, but has to grow into that right now. So, uh, you know, he's fine, guys, you know. I mean, we should be so lucky to have somebody that, you know, is in the process of growing and can still get 21 and 10, you know. Uh, so uh, it's not going to happen night in and night out yet, but he's been pretty doggone consistent, if you ask me, for what he what he brings to the table. So. Uh, you know, we just we got to allow him an opportunity to to grow as a player because he, he, he's going to do that and, and, and understand that he is a 19 year old kid uh, playing in the NBA. Been a lot of guys that have struggled, you know, I mean, Kobe did it, you know, and you go back and look at uh, some of the other guys that, you know, came in as young players and you have to grow into that, uh, you know, that that person and uh, that player that you're going to become. When, <laughs> when you when you're talking about turnovers now, is that are you seeing that more mental than physical? Or? No, the way we play, obviously we're going to have more turnovers. But I just think uh, we had too many uh, just unforced live turnovers yesterday, dribbling the ball just out of bounds, uh, fumbling the ball right into their hands, you know, passing the ball on outlet passes, you know, behind someone that wasn't looking. Those are the kind of ones that I think we have to eliminate. Those. Those, there, there's no reason for us to have those turnovers, but we are going to have some turnovers. Uh, we're out running, 
Uh, Zoe's probably going to have a couple of turnovers trying to throw a head to our bigs. That's, you know, that, that's understandable. But we just can't have the, uh, the unforced, you know, mental mistakes. I think that's the ones we got to get rid of. I think we're playing good basketball, but, you know, 23 turnovers, you know, 28 points or whatever, that's, it's hard to overcome. Obviously, he's, he's, he's an elite rebounder so far uh, in, in his minutes, but how does the attention that he draws on that side help the rest of the team? Because you guys have been well, I think any, rebounding since he's been back. Yeah, I, I think any time you have, you know, uh, a guy that, you know, that, that they're game planning for, it should help other guys out on the floor. And the other thing is, is that uh, uh, we made that a point of emphasis that, that we have to be better at rebounding. You know, since that, you know, that debacle that we had and uh, against, I think it was Denver, you know, uh, and we've done a better job with that. You know, we have we have done a better job. And just in general, uh, a lot of people are making a big deal about Houston playing the all mm -hmm. six, five and under guys. Line. Do you think that's something we'll see more teams lean into as kind of a small ball thing becomes, you know, more if you got good small ball players, you play small ball. <laughs> If you got, you know, good big players, you play good. You play. You try to get your best players out on the floor, and you know, obviously, they they feel comfortable playing that way. Uh, they're a low turnover team because they are, they don't pass the ball very much, and they run a lot of ISOs, and they got probably the best ISO player in the NBA. So, understand why they play that way. Uh, we played against them before and uh, been fine uh, against them. Uh, it, you know, it doesn't matter what you do. Or if they playing small ball, big ball, you know, no ball at all. If you're turning the ball over, you know, you just can't turn it over uh, at the rate that we're going and, and, and be able to be successful. You've seen uh, Lonzo playing Zion a couple times, you know, from 50, 60 feet away already. What do you just think about the chemistry that they have? Well, I think that's developing, and we we feel that way, and we like to have those two guys <clears throat> out on the floor, you know, uh, together as much as possible, which is one of the reasons we take. Uh, Zo out early on in the in the middle of the first, so that he can go back in the second. You know, uh, when when Zion come back, because we think they're developing a good chemistry together. What do you think about the way Milwaukee was able to lose some guys in free agency last year and retool? And it seems like there's still one. You're not, not retooling if you got Giannis, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> retooling when you lose Giannis. You don't lose Giannis. You're not retooling, okay? He's the you know it's the MVP of the league. That's all you need to know. And obviously, they got other very good players. You know, <clears throat> Chris Middleton's all star. You know, Bledsoe is, you know, having a great year. Uh, they have a big guy that creates havoc because uh, he's a three point shooter. So he's got your big guy away from the basket a lot. So, uh, you know, there's a reason that they got the best record in the NBA because uh, they do a great job defensively and they're very good at spreading the floor and, and they've got size and, uh, and they got the MVP in the league. So. It's understandable where they are right now from a record standpoint. From your standpoint, where, where do you feel like Giannis has taken the biggest step? Because it seems like he's either gotten better. Well, he's gotten better at shooting the ball, number mm -hmm. one, you know, uh, and that helps. And, uh, you know, the players around him are really solid and good. And, 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 you know, they're not asking him to do everything for that team, you know. Had a guy the other night on that team to get 51, you know. that That's, <laughs> that's, that's a lot of help, you know, so. Uh, uh, you know, they're, they're just a very solid, good basketball team that, uh, uh, that don't beat themselves. All right.